is a beautiful, beautiful Thursday morning. Good morning to you. How are you doing this morning? I am Daisy, and you're welcome to the business show. How are you guys feeling this morning? Good, solid, pumped up. Yep, pumped up. <laughs> I, I, I like, I like, I like the sound of that. Okay, so uh, before we go into what we have to discuss today, the business show is a one-stop place for you to get all of the business ideas you have. It's brought to you by Hex Xavier, and we have an amazing topic for you today. We'll be coming right after this short break to bring you more of those info. So stay right here. Xavier is a business and management consultant firm with over 128 businesses restructured, 200 and more businesses started, two MBAs, a decade of experience. We can take your business to a whole new level. The Business Show with Hex Xavier. It's the business clinic on radio. Come, learn and solve problems around strategy and structure. Growing your business. Join Izu, Daisy and Essay every Thursday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Heart 93.3. And we are back right here on the business show is live right here on Hot 93.3 FM. I am Daisy. We've got Izu and Essay in the building. And this morning, we're so excited to bring you an amazing topic. Today, we are looking at measuring business performance using the balanced scorecard. You know how we always do it right here. We bring you all of the details, very raw, very fresh bringing you all of the business, lingo franca, and all of that right here. And yes, we've got Izu. Izu, how are you doing this morning? You're looking red, ash, and blue. Ah, and white. what can we do? <laughs> <laughs> New Year resolution, we have to look colorful. Oh, good, good. <laughs> nice, nice. Bringing color to the building, nice. Essie, how are you doing this morning? Am I? <laughs> you need um, to see Essie. Essie, it's like you're not having to sleep in this, this, this <laughs> journey. Have you been doing some strategy it's and it's all of that? Hustle. <laughs> we are hustling. We're chasing the bag. Uh, let's take it small, 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 small. All right. Okay. And we have an amazing guest who will be helping us to dissect our topic this morning. All the way from the SME Mall, we have the C. Oh, oh, Fikayo Babatunde in the building. Good morning to you. Good morning, Essie. How are you doing today? I am doing very fine. And yes, I am Daisy. So let's continue. So first of all, we are looking at bus- measuring business performance using the balance scorecard. Before we have to go into knowing how to balance your business, we have to know what this scorecard is. So um, what is the typical scorecard for balancing your business? Okay, so basically what the balanced scorecard speaks to is a framework that every business or every entrepreneur can apply to their business and get a high-level picture across uh, four main indicators to see, okay, how am I doing financially? What are my internal processes like? And how do people feel when they come in contact with my business through the customer experience? And then when faced with challenges, how do I innovate around it? What are my, uh, what are the success metrics that are put in place to see how uh, steps taken towards innovation are uh, performing, whether positively or negatively, and mm-hmm. then you know make changes on the fly. Okay, so you need to. So I can see some evaluation in there. Is very very important in all of this process. I mean, you have to measure the negatives and positives, right, yeah. Izu? Absolutely. I, I'd, I'd like to think of it as the ultimate checkup, check right, for a business like the what you call is the equivalent of the vitals in medicine. You go into a mm-hmm. hospital. The first thing you do is you check your vitals. Four things: they check your blood pressure, they check your temperature, they check your body mass, and then they check your heartbeat. Right? Those four things. The, the equivalent of that. It doesn't matter what the complexity of your health issue is. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing they must check. That's why it's called the vitals. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if everything is okay, right, then it means that it's not that deep. First of all, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't matter what. Even if you have malaria and they check those things and they realize that they're way above the threshold, they would admit you. So that's the same thing. Like so. Business Business can be run, running around as if it's okay, but once you run those four vitals, which is the equivalent of finance, you can't say you're okay in business and you haven't paid salaries, for example, in the last three months. That that's just a bad. <laughs> no. There's no way you can say that your business no. is okay. So people fake people fake all sorts in business, right? So yeah. I would say men men fake finance, right? 
um, women fic. Right, but in the end, that's like sort of how it works, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, but 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 that's pretty much what it is. It's not vital to me, I understand. I saw a scorecard and I thought, why? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand. I'm hearing grades. Is this how it works? Like, there's. Do you have to have a number of credits in each category in order to say, okay, your business is doing great? Absolutely. It's actually that quantitative. There's a scoring sheet for it. So, yes. Of course, in the end, it has to be over 100%. So that means mathematically, it's 25% per quadrant. Is so they're right? weighted the same. There's not like, yes, oh, yes, one yes, is more yes, important no, than the that's other. That's what the balance goes. Okay. Like a, like a moment in physics, right? It has an equilibrium. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Um, yes, I like the way you just brought it down to our level. You know, when we hear scorecard, what we hear is examination. You want to think of jammed. <laughs> People that jam have jammed, <laughs> have been jammed. Yeah. So um, now, we are, now that we're talking about business and we want to look at having a good performance, I mean, it's the beginning of the year and it's a time, although some persons have already done their um, strategy and all of that at the end of the year, but this year um, we have people already launching in, and we want to make sure that they are doing things the right way. So let's talk about this scorecard, this key indicators. Let's make it easier for people that don't like examination terms, right? Mm -hmm. Indicators, key indicators to look out for when you're trying to give a balanced scorecard in your business. I think, um, Baba Tunde, you'll be a very good person to answer this question. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Daisy. Yeah. yeah, got it right now. So... Um, there are four of them. So like Gizu said, weighted evenly. Let's say we're splitting 100 into four places. 25, 25. Yeah. In each uh, category. So first one, your customer experience. Mm -hmm. Second one, your financials. Third one, your internal processes. Yeah. And the fourth one would be uh, innovation and growth. Okay. So now... Across those four indicators you're looking at, for customer experience, ultimately, that is your front-facing component of your business. Mm. Now, when someone comes in contact with me, what has their review been so far? Do I have positive reviews? Do I have negative reviews? Mm. If I have negative reviews, what can I do differently? Um, what are the things that I need to change? Do I need to change the approach? Mm. Do I need to change the people facing these guys? Do I need to change the technology I'm leveraging on? Mm. Those questions are inward. Those are the things that you ask yourself to fix it. Okay. Now, the process of fixing it, typically, in this day and age, you're looking at design thinking innovation. Now, that what that means, basically, is, is an iterative process. You're not looking at it that, okay, I want to solve all of this on the fly. You do the first thing. You see how it works. If it doesn't work, you go back to the drawing board, make changes, go back. Yeah. Just rinse and repeat, right? Yeah, in all of this, I've noticed that there is a very important, there's a key importance in listening, checking. Because, mm. I mean, so many people focus on the operations aspect. They don't check the feedback, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'm a businessman. I do my business. I put in my work. I sleep late. I do this. I do that. The business should work, right? But in this part, at, at least, we are still trying to dissect customer experience. Yeah. You are looking out for your customers. So, in a typical Lagos commercial setting what are the easy ways to get those feedback okay so one very low hanging fruit is just talking talking very like a lot I, of I, I know so many ceos <laughs> that don't get to me they don't, nah, they, don't, they don't have anything to so do. what they what people typically do is hire staff mm. have them face the customers and then say i'm building the product at no point do they go back and say, while you're talking to the person, let me actually listen. Are you listening to the person's problems? Mm. Or are you just telling them what you think the solution is? Mm. So taking the time to actually listen actively, which I think if you are the one with the equity ownership in a business, mm. you will listen mm. because it is your reputation at stake. You are the one with the name. Mm. But somebody that was hired will never be able to own the business really as much as the owner there's no way around it but as a ceo as a business owner as an entrepreneur taking the time to actively listen to the to the to the pain points of your consumers mm. will make all the difference in the world okay but, uh, okay but in regards to that like i get like the whole like the customer is always right but should you really listen to like every complaint like is the customer really always right or are some people just annoying 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I get Essay's angle. Like, uh, 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 like we don't, we don't, we don't care about. Social you have to sorry. listen, but you don't have to respond or react. I mm-hmm. think listening is something you must do to everyone. Okay. But it's a skill to be able to listen to everyone, but not, not take in everything. Right? Mm-hmm. So I agree. You can't build great product. I, I am almost my my personality showing up in some of these conversations. I, I think, for example, you can't build a great product by listening to everyone. Mm-hmm. Right or by reacting to everyone, you can't. In the words of in the words of Steve Jobs, you can't build a great product by groupthink. Gathering everybody in the market square, and say what do you guys think, what do you guys think. You know the when they created the first car, um, the Ford car. When they did a questionnaire on what people wanted, guess what they all wrote in their questionnaire? They wanted faster horses. Well, yeah, faster oh. horses. He didn't listen to faster horses. He mm-hmm. just made them. A, it, it just put the same horse and put like a, a, like a, literally a machine in a, in a horse because the first ones were like horse and carriage that had or like automated and that's just really how life works like you look at great products they're not exactly asking you in detail but you've got to give people an illusion that every view counts right yeah. so, you know you say everybody's equal but some people are more equal that than is. others yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay uh, I think we have done so well with customer experience another indicator would be what's the next one well, let's not call them indicators. Let's call them categories. Okay, <laughs> my friend. And the category is <laughs> finance. Let's go. Yeah. That's usually the most boring part because people don't like numbers that's that much. That's why we're making but it then, fun. That's mm-hmm. actually, if, if it wasn't all equal, that would have the highest score because in Nigerian context, you'd be shocked at how much, and I think it's driven by economics and how people are poor. People really want to measure everything by how much money are you making, right? So I'll give an example. The biggest banks in this country, when, when you look at the banks that are the biggest, like what you call for gas, First Bank, UBAGT, Access, and Zenith, they won't score above average in customer experience. But people still say they're the biggest or they're the best because of how much they make. Not about if you want to look at actually banks that have the best experience, mm. look at the very smaller banks, right? Mm. I, I don't want to give anybody credit on, on mm. air, but there are a lot of banks. You, I always it's like, it's like, that's actually, it's actually a thing, right? When you go to like the smaller banks, they mm. give you better experience. Mm. You go to these big banks, they act like they're doing you a favor. Like, you see a whole hall filled with like, let's say, 10 desk, 10 desk that's supposed to have like 10 uh, yeah. with, with, um, tellers, tellers, and then you have just two people, mm. and there's a whole crowd. Mm. Right, uh, you wonder what that whole uh, an average Nigerian bank has a whole building to itself, yes. but you have only three people serving like 100 people. Mm. That's how much they don't really care about you, and people really don't mind because I mean, everybody just wants it's like the same thing like people are in an abusive relationship just because the person is paying the bills. Mm. It's like that that infinitesimal conversation is what we take to corporate as long as I'm paying my staff well. It doesn't matter the experience they get from me, but it does matter the experience because they might go through mental health issues, finance. But really, if you want to break down finance, it's questions like how much sales did you make? Mm. Then how much profit did you make? Nigerians confuse sales with profit. So last week, uh, I think it was Nigeria Branch, somebody posted something about someone that made over a billion in Kulikuli, selling Kulikuli. Kuli Kuli, where there's an argument on how possible that is. I want to see the ground, not pyramid. That <laughs> 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 what? Did you say billion what a billion over a billion naira billion. Billion. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. right you know of course she was dragged or whatever it is but but the truth about it is even if that's possible i said let me see the income statement and guess what she made 15 million on profit on 1 billion that's hard labor come on how do you do f- like how do you take 1 billion to make 15 do you get like sales minus mm. expense minus mm. cost of sales gives 15 million like that if you look at that in percentage, that's like that's like <laughs> that's, that's literally one point five percent. That's one point five percent profit. Literally, you're not running your business because if they still just one 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 container, mm. you know, that's like one hundred container. It's a wrap, and that's what you realize. Like you see people who say they're distributors of maybe FMCGs in in Tunumbu, they own like ten warehouses. Mm. And you look at what the profit margin. I mean, if you know what profit margin is on on selling a truck load, a container load of Indomie, you will be shocked. Mm. Right, wow. you'll be shocked, like the profit margin on some of these things. But they are moving volumes. You're disturbing this, this area, you know, mm. and and so it's important. That's where, where the whole balance of your finance. Are you making money or are you making profits? Are you mm. selling? They're also looking at what your break-even analysis, right? Um, mm. How much are you selling with fixed costs and variable costs, right? Two people can do the same business, but they are more profitable. For example, the two biggest bank in Nigeria, the fight between let me say the first bank Zenith versus GT or first bank versus GT. GT is by far one of the most profitable, even though it's not making the most money, because they've learned how to make more money with less resources. Mm. I don't know if everybody noticed that GT actually has fewer branches than any of the banks in this category. In, right. its category. in its category. Yeah. Like five banks in its category. Five banks in its category. First bank, UBA, GT, Access, Zenith. Right? Mm. 
it's not like they are, they have they are making more per se in terms of sales, but their cost of sales is very low. And the reason why they've done that is that they've used technology. They're the most forward thinking with technology. Yeah. So mm-hmm. why you open yeah. four branches? Right. They have eight ATMs mm. that are very er- er- ergonomics in terms of man human intuition. So it's a lot of it's a lot of technicality, but thinking. it's important. <clears throat> yeah, very very important. I am. I'm, 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 I'm particularly interested in that because, I mean, we need to learn to work smart, not mm. working just hard, right? Yeah. And um, innovation is key. I think we've dealt with innovation, we've dealt with customer experience, we've dealt with finance. Now, one thing that is left amongst this indicator is structure. And this is something that most businesses struggle with. I mean, dealing with staff issues. It's, it's crazy. Every basic businessman <laughs> or woman knows that human beings can be very, very important. So that's the importance of structure, right? With structure in place, it can help to curb this issue. But then you guys are the experts, right? So please give us <laughs> the meat of this. How does structure really contribute to this? So you can have a product, right? Mm. But ultimately, you need people to sell the product. You need people on your end to sell outward, and you also need people outside to buy the product. Now, if you don't have people who are able to buy into your vision, who are able to buy into your dream on your side of the fence, there's no business. Mm. There's no scenario where she could have even sold the one billion kulikuli Mm. if she did not have people Mm. selling the kulikuli and literally orking the kulikuli, Mm. for lack of a better word. Now, let's drill down to the key issues in this day and age. So there's this dynamic between uh, millennials and Gen Z. I know she'll be interested in that conversation. <laughs> the battle of the generation. When it comes to... Watch yourself as well. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. when it comes to conversation in the workplace, right? So I have an unpopular opinion when it comes to that. So I believe that my generation, so I fall in the millennial category. Mm. My generation... Uh, learns from the people who came before us that you keep at it, you suck it up and move on. Mm. Um, SS Generation believes I do not have time to suck it up. If mm. it's not given, I'm walking. Mm. Right? Now, that dynamic trickles down into the workspace. Now, millennials are now the founders and the CEOs. So they expect you to suck it up and yeah. keep moving. And the Gen Zs are the members of staff. Mm. So you now see a high number of people starting a job and in three months they've moved on yeah. because it's not given. Mm-hmm. Now, how can you, as a business owner, as a founder, create structure so that you are able to give so your job can be given? Mm. Thank you. It's y'all's fault, <laughs> not ours. Thank you for taking ownership. Okay. So, no, no, no. We both, we both have... Guessing no, we're not. Guessing on this journey. <laughs> okay, so we're getting there. So you, as a business owner, Taking feedback, so it boils back to that initial conversation around listening. Taking feedback, it's not like Izu said, you do not have to react to everything. Listen, make the slight tweaks that can be made. Optimize your processes. Um, what's it called? Structure is such that there's so much technology out there that can make communication seamless. I mean, I know events that have happened, planned, executed finished on whatsapp slack yeah right nobody sat in one long uh, long um strategy. six long strategy session six it hours 12 long. hours <laughs> yeah everything with tea break lunch and everything. dinner <laughs> seven, water. Everything. Yeah. the meeting happened the event was successful uh on checking successes leads generated everything all of that technology has enabled that you as a business owner, you don't have to be stuck in that mindset that everybody has to be in the same space for productivity to happen. I, I personally believe if that is the case, then you have not done your job as a business owner. Because if you have the right metrics in place that you're checking, day in, day out, you will know, okay, this person should have contacted this number of people within the first three days of the week. You're checking if that has happened. And then you're able to move the conversation along to, okay, what are, where are we in terms of profitability? If uh, the leads you generated, you generated a thousand leads, how many people have been contacted on this thousand? It's metrics. You can check the numbers. If it has happened, it has happened. If it doesn't happen, then that person can be queried. Now, the mechanism that you put in place 
to guide the structures governing your business processes, number one, how you measure it, and how you translate that into creating an environment that's suitable for all cadres of people, be they be millennials and Gen Zs or whatever it might be uh, in this day and age. So I think uh, I'll cede the floor to my other speakers. Yeah. Just, just to add, I think um, one challenge people have with structure is culture. So I, I would always suggest that if you're running a business, right, be as diverse as possible, right? Uh, the worst thing you can have in a Nigerian company is have a company that is top heavy on a particular thing, particular tribe, particular generation, particular even where you grow up. Because one mm -hmm. thing I've been realized is where you grow up is a better determinant than state of origin, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm more interested in how people behave, people that grow up in Port Harcourt, than somebody whose state of origin is Rivers. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so um, my my point here is very simple, right? Structure is really about first of all creating core values, making sure your core values allows people who are diverse, right? I'm I'm, I'm these days I'm very rich on people who are alta or alternative yeah. in their thought process because I think we owe to them a lot of creative energy. They're divergent. They think out of the box. Mm -hmm. But really, structure yeah. is about: Do you have an organogram? Do you have shared values? Are you running a diverse company? Do you have a process for doing things? over and over again like SOP standard operating procedures right mm. is there a process for getting things done and yeah. once you have that you have some level of stability okay all right so um, we are still discussing um, growing a profitable business I mean this is the business show and so far we've got really really insightful topics I think we've um, dealt with the indicators the 4k indicators category okay <laughs> <laughs> category. according to SA uh, yes, we've dealt with finance, structure, innovation, and, cus and customer experience. And out of all of this conversation, one thing that I think or I've noticed in this generation and time is most of these things kind of boils down into company culture, yeah. right? I mean, the diversity of the people in the activities, the way they think. Everyone has to come under one umbrella, which is company culture. Yeah. And with... Most companies, I, uh, there is this saying that all companies are tech companies as far as you use technology. Mm. And then with these pioneers in tech, they have been doing, uh, I mean, um, Babatunde here, he runs SME Mall. Mm. Uh, so everyone is online. Everyone is there right now. And company culture is something that kind of runs it right now. So when we come back, we're going to discuss how to build a very strong one. And of course, look at your finance, right? Um, how to make sure your finance is moving, company culture is on point, and so many other discussions that we'll be having. So, guys, you want to stay with us right here because we'll be going on a short break. And when we come back, we'll discuss that and more. You still have Daisy, you still have Essay, and you still have Izu. And, of course, our guest, Mr. Batende, right here.